so I am going to try to record this video right now um the boys are in the room playing and the baby is asleep and it is cold so I have my hoodie on um <laughs> so yeah my hair is kind of a mess but anyway okay so my camera fell over while I was talking um <laughs> Because if y'all can see how I have it propped up right now, y'all would laugh at me. But anyway, so I want to go ahead and get this video recorded while they're playing and the baby is sleeping because I just feel like there's just, I just have like a ton of stuff going on. And yeah, so I'm, I got this moment, so I'm going to use this moment um, to talk about my birth story. Um, and I don't want to make this quick. Because also, my battery is going dead. <laughs> okay, so, um, I mentioned in the third trimester video how um, I went to the hospital several times um, to the uh, emergency, well, not the emergency room, but to labor and delivery for different things. The first time, it was because of the contractions. Um, I, I just... Out of the blue, I was just laying in the bed, and then I just suddenly just had these really bad contractions in my back. Like, I would get them, and I would just, you know, just breathe through them, and then it'll be over, and it was fine. This time, they just kept coming back to back to back to back to back. And I mean, like, I didn't have time to recover from the last one. And it would start, another one would start back or start up. And this went on, like, just continuously. So my husband called off from work, and we, we you know, got the boys um, <laughs> gathered up, and we headed to the hospital. By the time we got to the hospital, I had been having them back-to-back, -back, like, for an hour. Um, and so we get to the hospital. They will chair me up to labor and delivery, and by this point, now it's starting to settle down. I'm just like, oh, great. So then I get here, and it all calms down. And so then everybody just think I'm just being overly dramatic about stuff. Um, and so they, you know, they checked me, and everything was fine. And, you know, it was just, just keep resting. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so basically... <laughs> Long story short, I came to the conclusion, I did, that I was just really dehydrated because like I mentioned in third in my third trimester video, I was drinking a whole lot and yet I was still super, super thirsty. So I think I just, um, I was dehydrated. I wasn't, I didn't drink enough water that my body wanted or needed. Um, also, I had, I drank something too. What was it? I forgot what it was, but I drank something else. Was it like a cherry limeade or something like that? Oh, I made some punch. Um, yeah, because I made some punch because the punch that we had during the baby shower, I was so in love with it. And the punch is like, uh, what is it? Hawaiian punch with Sprite. Yeah that's good though um so i pretty much drunk like a whole picture a whole picture of that and yeah then that back contraction happened the second time i went to the hospital i thought my water had broke and so i went to the bathroom and i wiped and when i wiped i was still dripping on my leg and i'm like okay so i wiped again and i was still dripping so i'm just like oh shoot so I just kept wiping and I just kept dripping. So um, once again, it was almost time for my husband to go to work and he hadn't waken up yet. So still, you know, he was still in his nap. So I went and woke him up. And so for me to wake him up, you know, it's, you know, it's something important. <laughs> so I woke him up and I'm like, hey, um, I think my water broke, I think. Um, so yeah, so he got up and we were just like figuring this thing out. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting, you know, like just flood of water to just come out or whatever. This, I wasn't for sure. 
And that just really like irritated me even the more because I'm like, oh my great, oh my gosh, great. Now, of course, it would be something that I wouldn't be able to identify right off the bat. So we made it to the hospital. We get there. They check me and no, there's no amniotic fluid um, leaking. So my conclusion, once again, was that it was just um, a discharge. So, yeah, so by this point, I pretty much was just um, playing it cool, like just, just relaxing, just straight chilling, bed rest, yeah. I was having my doctor's appointments every week, and yeah. So I go in for my last doctor's appointment, oh yeah, and because of the low-lying placenta, well, it was that, and then I had um, low fluid also so because i had low fluid amniotic fluid i forgot to mention that in my third trimester video but because of that i had to do non-stress testing um twice a week so i went in for my last non-stress test and my last doctor's appointment so the doctor's appointment i was able to go ahead and schedule an induction i was like thank goodness so we scheduled the induction um, for the 14th um, of November. And yeah, so induction day came. Yay, we're so excited. So we get up and it was in the morning too. So I'm like, yes, we about to have this baby today. So we get up and we get ready and yeah. Um, my husband's mom is excited. My mom is excited. We ready to get this show on the road. And then my doctor's, the hospital calls me and they say, we are backed up. Can we move your induction? We're going to have to move your induction to tomorrow morning. Come in tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Which I, which that actually wasn't a surprise to me because when I went in thinking that my fluid um, was leaking, um, they were backed up then. And um, because when I told them that I think that my water broke, they were, they had this reaction like, oh my gosh, is it a full moon today? Because they're like, everybody's coming in with their water breaker today. So I could understand when they called me and was like, yeah, we're backed up. We don't have any rooms. Um come tomorrow. So, so they moved me to the 15th. So I was like, okay. So the 15th came. So that morning and, um, so we get there and pretty much, um, we get, you know, I get checked in and get, you know, set up and everything. And, the next process was just pretty much a very long, boring process. So they give me, I think, a cervidil. Um, so they give me the cervidil, and that's supposed to stay in um, for 12 hours. So it was just 12 hours, 12 hours of nothing, just hanging out in the hospital room, bed. Yeah. So then after the 12 hours, the doctor checks me, and guess what? Nothing has happened, pretty much. Um, so then she says, we're going to give you another dose of Cervidil. <laughs> so that means another 12 hours of just sitting there hanging out. Waiting on the Cervidil to soften my cervix and get things prepared for um, the Pitocin, prepared for actual labor. Um... So, yeah. oh gosh, yeah, just thinking about it just has me like, oh my gosh. Okay, so by the time the second Cervidil is, um, has completed, it's has set in for 12 hours, it is now um, the 16th. And it is, oh gosh, what time was it? I think it was maybe that afternoon or close to afternoon. And so then I get the, um, I get ready for the Pitocin. But the thing is, 
I was almost sent home because my doctor was very concerned about my um, diastasis recti and the baby was leaned forward so much that it would make it hard for him to go down the birth canal. So she was like, if we don't get this baby sitting back, I'm going to have to send you home and let you um, go into labor naturally. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. So she started brainstorming and they got something and they wrapped my belly up. And I tell you, that thing was tight, but they had him like up. So that way, when he started to come down, he could easily come down. And yeah, so then I had to uh, wait. Um before it was time for the Pitocin, we had to wait for something. So I get the Pitocin, and so I am I already had a plan in my mind that, okay, I'll have like maybe one or two bad contractions, and then I'm getting that epidural. Because, I mean, I've, I've gone pretty much all of my, my other births, um, deliveries, without epidural, because by the time I got epidural, I was ready to push. So I'm like, this time, I don't even want to deal with all that. I just I just want to be able to chill this time, you know, instead of going through all those contractions and stuff. Yeah, right. <sighs> I went through them anyway because by the time they gave me the Pitocin, I was like, okay, so when? how soon can I get the epidural? And they were like, when you get, you know, when your contractions are at a steady, you know, uh, frequency and everything. Okay, yeah. So then they started to come in regularly. And I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and get this epidural going. So they put in for the epidural. So then there was a wait because the um, anesthesiologist was on a case downstairs somewhere else in the hospital. So we had to wait on him to get there. So while we're waiting, these contractions are steady getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I'm just at the point like I've been through enough already. I don't want to keep going through this. Can he hurry up and get here? And I'm like getting the attitude and everything. And I'm just like, y'all, where he at? And so, <laughs> and they're like, it's okay. It's okay. Because, you know, they, the nurses, you know, they, they're trying to, you know, of course, they're trying to keep you calm and everything. But at the same time, it seems very condescending. Like, okay, don't insult me. You, you know I'm in pain. Don't even sit there and try to play me like I'm overreacting or I'm being overly dramatic. Don't play me. <laughs> but... <laughs> but and they're just like you know it's okay they're coming they're coming and I'm like okay but I need him here not coming and they're getting worse and worse and worse and y'all honestly I think these contractions were the worst contractions I felt like these felt worse than with AJ and Amari these things felt worse. Like, I was like, I don't even know if I actually did cry. I know I wanted to. I think I did cry. But I, that, and it wasn't just that, oh, it was just so painful. It was just, I was just tired and sick of it all. And just, yeah. And the whole thing was just emotional because, you know, that whole moment of where I'm thinking, they're getting ready to send me home. I'm going to have to sit here and still be suffering through all this. So now I'm suffering through all this and nobody's taking me seriously. So then finally, the anesthesiologist comes in, puts in the epidural, and it starts to, you know, uh, does its thing, and then I start to feel better. Everything starts to ease. I start to feel more relaxed and calm, and I'm like, oh, finally. And I actually take a nap. So I get them to, like, prop me up, because um, laying on my back and stuff, oh, my gosh, it hurts so bad. Remember I mentioned my uh, round ligament pain and my hip pain? So it felt better to just sit up. I still had the band wrapped around my belly. Um, so now I got the Pitocin going, contractions are going, I got the epidural, let's go. So I take a nap and I wake up and it's like an hour later and it's like six o'clock, like, like after six o'clock. And I wake up and I look around and my husband is asleep, my mom, my mother-in-law, there, you know, sleep dozed off, and I nudge my husband, and I'm like, I feel a lot of pressure. So he asked, and he asked me, and he was like, "Is it like, like, uh, is it in spurts or is it just constant?" And I'm like, "It's constant. Like, 
it feels like I'm sitting on the baby's head. Like, it's really strong pressure. So he was like, okay, I got you. So then he gets up and he goes and gets the nurse. And by the time they come back, I'm just like, mm, it feels like the baby is coming. And the nurse is just like, oh, it's okay. No, the baby's not coming yet. It's not coming yet. And so I'm just going to check you. So then she checks me. And she's like, oh, my gosh, yes, the baby is coming. So I'm like, what did I just sit here and tell y'all? So, <laughs> so she goes and gets everybody. You know, they call the doctor. And the doctor didn't hurry down because the doctor thought she had time. And <laughs> the doctor thought she had time to, like, you know, uh, the get because I guess she was on on uh, campus on the, at the hospital sleep or whatnot because she was on call so I guess she had, she thought she had time to freshen up so she was trying to like freshen up and get prep for delivery yeah that baby was not waiting on anybody like and I could feel the contractions like I could feel the pressure of the contractions and every time I felt the contractions I felt the baby moved down even more. And I'm like, the baby is coming. I kept saying it. Uh, I think the baby is coming. The baby is coming out. The baby is coming out. No, no, no. And that's the nurse. No, baby's not coming. And then she checks again and she's like, oh, okay. So then she goes and gets the head nurse. And the head nurse comes in and she's like, okay, I'm going to need you. Because by the time she got in there, the head had come out already. Like I felt the head just come out. Because I'm just like, Cause I'm like, y'all really want to push. And they're like, no, 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 don't push. Don't push. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to push, but he's still coming. I'm not pushing, but he coming. Okay. Y'all can tell me don't push, but he's still coming. And so finally, you know, the, the head nurse or the charge nurse, whatever she comes. So she tells me to go ahead and push and I push, boom, baby is out. And so then she hands the baby over. Um, uh, well, she hands, hands the baby to me. And then they get the baby all cleaned up and stuff. Then they hand the baby back to me. And then the doctor comes in. And so then she comes and sits down and tells me to push. And I push the um, afterbirth out and everything. And then um, so apparently I tore a little bit too. So she sews me all up and everything. So they get me all cleaned up and prepped up. And I had the baby. <sighs> and finally, finally, it's over. Like, I am like so relieved like I'm so relieved and just oh finally so now it's just at the point where it's time to you know just get everything cleaned up and get all my stuff and you know bond with the baby and that's what I did I bonded with his sweet precious self and we started you know get things together and then move me on to the recovery room and yeah and so it was just like all smiles and happy and everybody's just like, yeah, how cool. And of course, you know, the fact that the baby, how the baby came, like he just came and everybody just knew we had time. No, we did not. And they all just thought that was just, you know, that was a story for the books. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So I gave birth to a seven pounds, two ounce baby boy and he was 21 inches long so I have a nice long little baby and his name is Amir Malakim so on my super mom's journey channel I am now the mother of three little boys and to think I started this whole channel and blog this whole super mom's journey because it was an actual journey to become a mother. And now I'm a mom of three, y'all, three. So I am a mom of three boys. And so now I present to you all my newest little boy, Amir Malakim.